Dear Father in heaven, I want to thank you so much for the gift of life that you've given us, Lord, to come before you. We thank you for the opportunity that you've given those who have joined the ministry and those who have been ordained and consecrated to your work, dear Father, that may fill them with your Holy Spirit, that you may continue to support them, that may, they may do your work faithfully. We pray, Lord, as a church, Lord, that you may consecrate the whole church, Lord, to your mission, that your work may be done perfectly and in order. We pray for all the ministers and those self-supporting ministers who have given their lives for your work at this time, that, dear Father, you may support them. We pray for their wives and their children, that, Lord, you may save them from sin and deliver them unto heaven. We thank you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning. How was your night? I hope you had a great time. Uh, how many people have been blessed since this week, since this committee began? Amen. I thank the Lord for bringing us here that he may teach us the right way in which we should walk. Okay? Today, we are going to look at the management of resources. How are the resources for the mission of God, how are they supposed to be managed? And we shall also look at self-supporting work. How can our ministers be able to do a work that they are able to support themselves and also support others who are together with them in the gospel ministry. Okay. But we shall start with some admonition. Two states says, never, never was there a time when the truth will suffer more from being misrepresented, belittled, demerited through the perverse disputing of men than in this last what? Days. So because we are in the last days and the truth will be belittled, we need to arise very zealously and fight to defend the truth. Men have brought themselves in with their heterogeneous mass of heresies, which they represent as oracles for the people of, for the people. The people are charmed with some strange new thing and are not wise in experience to discern the character of ideas that may frame up as something, but to call it something of great consequence and tie it to the oracle of God does not make it truth. Oh, how this, re this rebukes the low standard piety in the churches. Men who want to present something original will conjecture up things new and strange and without consideration will step forward on these unstable theories that have been woven together as precious word, theories and present it as a life and death question. Yeah? We need to rise up those who have the truth. And also the members should rise up to support those who have the truth, that the truth may be placed in its right setting that people who are in such confusion may not be misled. Okay? We have the truth, the solid truth in the word of what? God. All these speculations and theories would better be what? Strangled in the cradle rather than nourished and brought to what? Prominence. We are to hear the voice of God from his revealed word and his revealed word, the sure word of what? Prophecy. Those who will magnify themselves and seek to do some wonderful thing would better come to a sound word, sound mind. Yeah? We need to leave this camp meeting when you have a sound word, mind. Okay? 
price, the cross of Christ should be the center of our thinking. He says that the cross is the revelation to our dullard senses of the pain that from its inception sin has brought to the heart of what? To the heart of God. So if we know that there is some pain in the heart of God, how quickly should we combine our forces and move like an army or with what? With banners to go forward to fight this battle. How many? We need to come up quickly. Hmm. Now, now let's continue and see now how these resources. Yesterday, we read this quotation. I want to begin from it. Yeah. And also ask a question that one of us has sent said, what if I give or send my tithe to the ministers in the field? After all, the tithes are for the Levites. Please share more light on this point. Have you understood the question? The person is saying, what if I give or send my tithe to the ministers in the field? After all, all tithes are for Levites. Please share more light on this, on this point. Now, we have no liberty to use God's means the way we see it best. Yeah? You have no liberty. As long as we have gospel order and we have uh, things which are already put in order, all things should go to the treasury. Okay? I gave you last time an example of a home whereby the mother is receiving a lot of love from the children. All the phone calls, the mother is receiving. The text messages, is the mother receiving. The bread, when it's brought home, they take it to the kitchen to the mother. And the father is seated under the tree they just say, hello, Muse. And you see the mother growing fat, fat, and the father slim, isn't it? Why? Because every child in the home cares more about the mother who showed them love and forgets the sacrifice of the father. The same in the church. You may find a preacher who is very what? prominent and very popular and loved. And all the people start sending money to this one, ministers, and there are very other faithful ministers, at times more faithful than him, who are in want of what? It means to go forward to preach the gospel. Isn't it? Now, Sister it says, some cases have been kept before me for years, and I have supplied their needs from the tithe as God has instructed what? Me to do. Yeah? At times, you may give a call and ask, Pastor, whom should I give my tithe? Who is in the field that I may give my tithe? You need to pray. But she started giving this note as a rule that should be followed generally. No, as long as there's a treasury, the means should go to the what? The treasury. You are going to see. And if any person shall say to me, Sister White, will you appropriate my tithe where you know it is most needed? I say, I shall say, yes, I will. And I have done so. I commend those sisters who have what? Place their tithe where it most needed to help to do what that is being left undone. If this matter is given publicity, it will create what? A knowledge which would better be left as it is. I do not care to give publicity to this work which the Lord has appointed me to do and others to do. I send this matter to you so that you shall what? Shall not make mistakes. Yeah? Now, she says, circumstances does what? 
alters cases. Yeah? I would not advise that anyone should make a practice of gathering up faith what? Money. Yeah? He said, no one should make it a practice of gathering up tight what? Money. The money should go to the what? The treasury. Then she says, but for years there have been, now and then, persons who have lost confidence in the what? Appropriation of the tithe. Who have what? Placed their tithe in my hands and say that if I did not take the, it, they would what? Place themselves, they would what? They would themselves appropriate it to the families of the most needy ministers they could what? Could find. What did Sister White do? She says, I've taken the money and given what? A receipt for it. Who usually have the receipt of the church? The treasurer, isn't it? What does it mean here? She took the money and gave it to who? To the treasurer. Is it okay? She did not take the money and start distributing it to whosoever she sees what? Most needy. But she took the money, gave it to the treasurer, and she was given what? A receipt for, for it. And told them how it was what? Then she went and told the people from which she took the money how the money was what? Appropriated. I write to this to you so that you shall, you shall keep what? Cool and not become stirred up and give publicity to this what? Matter, least more shall follow their what? Example. What publicity? She doesn't want you to give publicity that you are at liberty to appropriate your tithe the way you see it fit. As long as we have the treasury. And ministers should be under gospel what? Order. And they must believe and practice it. And also teach others to follow the same thing. How sure are you that the money you're sending to that minister is doing the work for which you sent the money for? How will you follow up and be sure that so-and-so in Kenya, in South Africa, in Uganda, in Ethiopia, are doing exactly and using the money for what the money was intended for? Are you sure? But if there's gospel order, it's easy to follow up. Yeah? We can ask the church leadership, and the church leadership will be able to tell us which ministers are in the field and what work they are what they are doing. There are many who have asked money from abroad and have appropriated it in something which was not intended for. You know it, isn't it? These are facts and realities. Yeah. So it says, uh, the storehouse and the treasurer. It says, if all the tithes were brought into the storehouse, God's treasury would not be empty. Empty, isn't it? Would not be what? Empty. Bring all the tithes into the house store, in the storehouse, that there may be what? Meat in my house. That is a surplus of means in the treasury to amply sustain the work of God in its various what? Branches. Bring the tithes. Voluntary offerings and the tithes constitute the revenue of the what? Gospel. Of the means entrusted to man, God claims a certain portion, the tithe. He leaves all free to say whether or not they will give more than this. But he needs only 10%. So if you want to give more than 10%, you are at least you are at liberty, right? When you talk about the word revenue, it's a clear word to us, isn't it? When you look at our government, they gather revenue from its people, isn't it? To construct roads, to maintain the operation of the government, isn't it? And they take it from you, not you willingly, isn't it? But you see how loving our God, he gives you the liberty whether to give the tithe or not. But there are consequences. Jesus is the true 
storehouse. The Lord Jesus is a never failing what? Storehouse from which human beings may withdraw strength and what? And courage. Okay. Satan out generally out generally out generaled them. He would more show he was more shrewd than they, and he managed to get that means into his what? Ranks and thus deprived the cause of God's God of that which should have been used to sustain it in extending the truth and saving souls for whom Christ died. They lost all they had, invested, and robbed God of that which they should have what? Rendered him. Satan will continue to deceive God's people and show them that the they matter or the, the, the question of tithe and offering that is not of vital importance. But I'll tell you, this is a question of, of what? Of life and, and death. Why? Because you've retained the money of salvation of a fellow sinner. For you've known Christ, but you're keeping the money so that person should not get saved. Isn't that a grave matter? It's a grave matter. What if you... In the day of judgment, the, you're told that your neighbor is the reason why you were not sell. He retained the money for which was supposed to send the minister to you. He retained it. And that's the reason why you did not get the message to be saved. How would you feel? You feel you'll feel bad, isn't it? Okay. Vindicating the use of tithes and offerings and honoring, honoring the name of what? God. Now, it says here, the elders of our churches and the ministers have not been, uh, has not been as branches of the living what? Vine, drawing nourishment from Christ. They are not rich in spiritual knowledge and have an heavenly what? Wisdom, but are dry and Christless. Men's words they speak in the desk may be good in themselves, but they are powerless because the heart of the speaker has not been what? Transformed by grace. The churches would be far better without such elders and what? Ministers. The ministers need to get converted. And money is drawn from the what? Lost treasury to support those who are what? Unconverted and need that one teach them the first word, principles of the, of the gospel. Go together. They need to be taught the first principles of the gospel. Says, for the last 50, 15 years, the deplorable condition of the Michigan Conference has, from time to time, been presented before me, and I have felt anguish of soul as I have seen the true state of what? Things. There are dishonest men in our churches. There are licentious men in this large conference that is declension in the place of constant advancement to a higher, holier standard. And there is little of the proper labor done by ministers in the churches because many do not carry the burden of the soul for whom they labor. The truth has not sanctified their hearts. See? She continues saying, those who are truly converted are called to do a work that requires money and what? Consecration. The obligation that binds us to place our names on the what? Church role holds us responsible to work for God to the uttermost of our ability. He calls for undivided service and for the entire devotion of heart, soul, mind, and strength. Christ has brought into the church capacity that he may engage and engross all our capabilities in devoted service for the salvation of souls. Anything short of this is opposition to the work. 
Mm -hmm. the, then say, there are only two places in the world where we can deposit our treasures, in gold storehouse or in Saturn's. And all that is not devoted to Christ's service is counted on Saturn's side and goes to strengthen his cause or the cause of Saturn. Which cause do you want to support? Christ's what? Cause. I've, I've had special instruction from the Lord that the tithe is for the special purpose. Consecrated to God, sustain those who are, who minister in the sacred work as the Lord's chosen to do his work, not only in sermonizing, but in ministering. They should understand all that is, that this comprehends. You see what the, the tithe is used for? We should understand what this comprehends. Light has been plainly given that those who minister in our schools, teaching the word of God, explaining the scriptures, educating the students in the things of God, should be supported by the what? By the tithe money. This instruction was given long ago, and more recently, it has been repeated again and what? Again. So, at times, some people are laboring, but they're not what? Supported. And you find that only evangelists are being what? Supported. But she's saying, teachers and all, even those who are laboring in medical missionary work, work must be fully supported. And the wives of the ministers should also be fully supported as well as their work, as the pastors and ministers. The wife should also receive the tithe. Right? Some utterly fail to realize the importance of missionaries being also made for what? Missionaries. They think missionaries are only those who are made for what? But no. A gospel minister will be twice as successful in his work if he understands how to treat disease. Continually, increasing light has been given me on this subject. There's one she says that if you only preach the word, you won't be as successful as a minister who is what? A physician. The physician will do tenfold. Yeah? Continually, he says, some who do not see the advantage of educating the youth to be what? Physician, both of the mind and of the what? Of the body, say that the tithes should not be used to support medical missionaries who devote their time to treat the, the sick. In response to such statement as this, I am instructed to say that the mind must not become so narrowed down that it cannot take in the truth of the situation. A minister of the gospel who is also a medical missionary who can cure, cure physical elements is, has, is a much more efficient worker than one who cannot do this. His work as the minister of the gospel is much more complete. Much more what? So a, a minister who is a what? A medical art missionary. The word medical missionary simply means what? A minister who is sent to make all nations Christians through what? Through preaching and healing. You together? So is more, is a better worker than the one who is only laboring in the what? This is a call that all of us should become medical what? Missionaries. We thank God for that. Amen. The tithe should go to those who labor in word and what? Doctrine. Be 
They men or what? Women. Okay? If there's a woman who is laboring in what? In word and doctrine or in medical missionary what? Lines should be fully supported by the what? By the tithe. Not only what? Not only men. Okay? Point taken, isn't it? The true responsibility in stewardship. The churches must arouse. The members must awake out of sleep and begin to inquire how is the money which we put into the treasury being used. The Lord desires that a close such be, be what? Be made. All are all satisfied with the history of the work for the past 50 years. Where is the evidence of the co-working with God? Now, this is a responsibility of the church members, the church elders, of all the leaders in the church, to inquire how is the money which we put into the treasury being used. I think gospel sounders need to call for a committee, isn't it? Of all leaders, and they search into this matter. That's why you need to have receipts for everything. How is the money being, being used? This is where I'm, I'm telling many people, when you're sending funds, make sure the money you're sending is doing exactly what you're sending the money for. Without gospel order, you won't be able to know how the money which you sent is being used for. As there are wars for those who preach the truth while they are unsanctified in heart and life, so there are wars for those who receive and maintain the unsanctified in the position which they cannot what? Fail. If the Spirit of God has not sanctified and made pure and clean the hands and heart of those who minister in what? Sacred thing. They will speak according to their own what? Imperfect and deficient experience, and their counsels will lead astray from God those who look to them and trust in their judgment and experience. There's a wall. Now, let's look at self-supporting work. How shall the ministers, those who minister in word and doctrine, those who have given their life and time to work in the lines of medical missionary work in the course of God, how are they supposed to support themselves? Are they supposed to depend on donations and funds? You know what happens. Someone can give you the funds as far as you are in line with either his ideas, isn't it? When the time comes whereby your phone that you don't believe, let me use an, as an example, that you don't believe in the doctrine of the Trinity, what happens? Your disfellowship and also what? Your character is assassinated, isn't it? So yet you may be having the truth. How will you be able to take this truth when you have, you've not learned some skills in order to support yourself and support those who shall do, yoke up with you in this ministry. That's what we want to Let's look at the life of Paul. Mm -hmm. The apostle Paul is a great example of a self-supporting minister. It says here, when Paul came to Corinth, he solicited work from who? From Aquila. He solicited what? Work from who? Aquila. Let the youth stop the things of saying they have nothing they can do. Yeah? The apostles counseled and prayed together 
and said that they would preach the gospel as it should be preached. As it should be what? So there's a way the gospel should be what? Should be preached. And this is the part which made Paul second to Christ as the best teacher the world has ever had. Because he preached and also what? He preached by working. He preached a practical word, sermon. He lived what he, what he preached. Not because he was an eloquent preacher, no. In disinterested love for the souls who were perishing for lack of knowledge, Paul would work at tent making and teach his fellow laborers to work with their what? Hands so that in any emergency, they could support what? Themselves. They could support them what? Themselves. We should learn some skill and use our hands. Let's encourage the ministers, encourage the youth to use their hands to do something. There is a problem of receiving funds from people. As I told you, just go and see the non-governmental organization which are in our societies, what they are doing. Some of his ministers, brethren, presented such a course, a course as inconsistent, saying that by doing so, they would lose what? Their influence as what? Ministers of the gospel. Someone will tell you, no, I won't go and dig. How will people see me a whole minister digging? No. When someone says such a thing, is not a minister of God. Yeah? The 10th chapter of the second Corinthian recalls the difficulties Paul had to contain with and his what? Vindication of his cause. God had placed special honor upon Paul. He had given him his credentials and had laid upon him weighty responsibility. And the apostle writes, I, Paul, myself beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in his in presence I am, I am best among you, because he humbled himself to do mechanical work, work but being absent, I am bold towards you. What's mechanical work? He worked with his what? Hands. This did not take even a single iota of his influence. Mm -hmm. Paul, aboard with them Aquila and who? Priscilla. And having in his youth learned their trade of making tents, which were much used in that warm climate, he worked at this business for his what? His own what? His own support. In other words, there was already a gospel order they would even send Paul means from Jerusalem, isn't it? Yeah? But remember, by the time Paul was preaching righteousness by faith, there were Jews who were going to every church which he has established and character assassinating him, isn't it? And therefore, it means he would not be able to receive funds from where? From the treasury. Because there are elders in the world who are in charge of the treasury who do not agree with the righteousness of faith which Paul is what? Preaching. So what helped him to continue preaching the gospel? He did what? He, he worked for his own what? Support. Okay? Paul was highly educated. Highly what? Now there are people who say, for me, I have three degrees. I even have a master's. How can people see me dig? How can people see me sell charcoal? But see, Paul was highly educated and was admired for his what? Genius and eloquence. He was chosen by his what? Countrymen as a member of what? Senhan, 
dream and was a rabbi of distinguished ability, yet his education had not been considered complete until he had served an apprenticeship at some useful what? Trade. So even if you have a master's, but if you don't have some work that you can use your hands, your education is not what? Complete. Gan study about the school of the prophets, which Samuel set up. And study how the curriculum was. It was so practical. When Elisha came, the, the, the children of the prophets did what? They told Elisha, let's go to the Jordan and what? And cut wood that we may bring and what? Build what? They didn't send for someone to come and build a house for them. But they told the prophet, let's go where? To River Jordan and what? We cut wood and come and build what? And build a house for ourselves. Even food, they went to the garden and got food for, for themselves. That did not detract any influence from them. Actually made them what? For? Complete. Paul rejoiced that he was able to, to what? To support himself by manual labor. Manual what? Manual labor. And frequently declared that his own hands had ministered to his what? Necessities. Okay? While in a city of strangers, he would not be chargeable to anyone when his means had been expended to advance the cause of Christ, he resorted to his what? Trade in order to gain a lively wood. Are we together? Do you know at times you go to a field and you need to support those whom you have to preach to first before they can hear the word? Now, if you're not a self-supporting minister, how would you be able to support those whom we, who are who are in need of you. We need to have our hands on the plow. Although feeble in health, he, Paul, labored during the day in serving the cause of what? Christ. Now we see his, the way he worked. During the day, he labored in serving the cause of what? Christ. Then, and then toiled a large part of the night of the what? And frequently all night that he might provide for his own and others' necessities. You see how hardworking Paul was? He was in feeble health. In other words, he was sickly. His strength was what? Was waning. But see, he labored during the day to preach the gospel. But at night, large portion of the night, and then at times the whole night, he was what? Laboring to provide for his own and for others who were with him. Luke was a medical missionary, was together with Paul. The, uh, Cyrus and others were all together. Paul was providing for their what? Necessities. And they are laboring together. Yeah? Ministers, let's avoid this thing. When a youth comes to, to labor together with you, let him not sit on the desk as if he's the minister. Let him get to the what? To the plow and labor. Not issue of just uh, checking, has the secretary for everyone, checking the Facebook post and WhatsApp post. A skillful workman. Paul, the great apostle to the Gentiles, learned the trade of tent making. There were higher and lower branches of tent making. Paul learned the higher branches, and he could also work at the common branches when circumstances were required. Tent making did not bring returns so quickly as some other occupations, and at times it was only by the strictest economy that Paul could supply his needs. We need to learn to gather the fragments. To gather the what? We should know how to use the Lord's money. He says here, Paul was very strict in economy. 
He never put money where he will not get returns. An educator. Paul was an educator. He preached the gospel with his voice and he, in his what? Intelligent labor, he preached it with his what? Hands. With his what? Hands. He educated others in the same way in which he had what? Been educated by one who was regarded as the wisest of human teachers. As Paul worked quickly and skillfully with his hands, he related his fellow workers the specification Christ had given Moses in regard to the building of the what? Tabernacle. Build the, build the tabernacle according to the pattern shown you in the what? The mount. He showed them that the skill and wisdom and genius brought into that work were given by God to be used to his glory. He taught them that the supreme honor is to be given to God. A man who works with his hand is a king. He's not a servant. It's not what? Servant. The Bible even says that the king shall be supplied by the what? By the farm, by the field, isn't it? Now, the enemy, the enemy, the envy and rage of the Jews against the Christian knew no bounds, and the unbelieving residents were constantly stirred up. They made complaints that the Christian Jews were disorderly and what? Dangerous to the public? Good. Yeah? Constantly they were setting in motion something that would stir up strife. This caused the Christians to be banished from what? Rome. Let's first stop there. Yeah? Do you know when you don't work and you're ever loitering and people are getting there, jambe, they're going where? Well to the field. And for you, you're just seated reading quotation after quotation. Posting on Facebook and WhatsApp. And they are seeing you. What are they going to say? You're what? Disorderly. And you're what? Dangerous to the what? To the public good. Yeah? They ask your wife, what does your husband do? And your wife cannot, cannot answer that question. Because she's also confused whether you're a minister or you're not a minister. So they just give you the title that he's a pastor. Because yeah, she cannot explain what you can do. So she has to just tell the community that my husband is a pastor. Of which ministry? He has a church and a gospel. Sounders. But when you, when they, if they were to follow up and come to gospel sounders, you won't even be a deacon. Now, among those banished were Aquila and who? Priscilla, who went to Corinth and there established business as manufacturers of tents. That's why we should always ask the youth, what are you doing? Or what are you able to do? Or what do you want to do? The business of just supporting youth without uh, renewing their mind, that they may see that their hands should be on the plow, is not a good thing. You'd rather give me the rod than give me the fish. Yeah? Now, learned Apollo. Apollo was instructed by Priscilla and what? And Aquila. Look, Apollos had received the what? The highest Christian culture. It's the same today. Those who have masters and bachelors in education or in any field of, of education, you receive the highest what? Because the education system is from Greece, isn't it? Apollo had the same and was a scholar and an orator. Aquila and Priscilla listened to him and saw that his teachings were what? Defective. This man who had had the highest education, his teaching was what? 
defective. He had not a thorough knowledge of the what? Mission of Christ, his resurrection and ascension, and of the work of his what? Spirit, the comforter which he sent down to remain with his people during his absence. They accordingly sent for Apollos and the, and the educate and the educated orator received instruction from them with grateful spirit and so a, a grateful surprise and joy. No, when someone gets this Grecian education, most times they are not humble. But here we have example of who? Apollo, who humbled himself to sit at the feet of what? Aquila. Why? You, let me tell you, this man could not just sit at anyone's feet. But because of the reputation of this man and his wife, Aquila and Priscilla, he was able to sit at their feet. Why, what, did he, what was in Aquila and Priscilla that made this highly educated man to humble himself to sit down? They were orderly. Yeah? They were preaching using their what? Hands. And he saw a higher and complete educated men and what? Women. That brought him lower to humble himself and then he received what? Teaching. Through that teaching, he obtained a clear understanding of the scriptures and became one of the ablest defenders of the Christian church. Thus, a thorough scholar and brilliant orator learned the way of the Lord more perfectly from the teaching of a Christian man and a woman whose humble what? Employment was that of tent what? Making. It was this employment that made this man to honor this this what? This couple. No one will honor you when they are seeing you're always loitering around the society. And when the season comes, you're, you're asking for flour. You can make porridge. No one will honor you when your children are suffering for want of food. No one would want to come and sit at your feet when you fail to dress up your wife. So, lastly, this is what Paul tells us. He says, And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to, to the word of his word, grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are what? Sanctified. I have converted no man's silver or gold, or apparel. Paul never sat there and converted for anyone's money. He never wished that so-and-so should send him money. He never. Why? He was working with his wife. He said, yea, ye yourselves know that these hands have what? Ministered unto my what? Necessities unto them that were with with me. I have showed you all things how that so laboring ye ought to support the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus how he said it is more blessed to give than to what? To receive. Let's repeat that. It is more what? Blessed to give than to what? To receive. Those who always want to sit there and receive funds Christ is saying it's more blessed to receive, to do what? To give than to what? To receive. May God bless you with that. And when he had first spoken, he did what? He knelt down and prayed with them all. And they all wept and fell on Paul's what? Neck and what? He kissed and kissed him. May we pray.
Dear Father in heaven, we know it's a privilege, Lord, to be called into your ministry. We know it's also a privilege, Lord, to be living at such a time in which the everlasting gospel is to sound in every corner of the globe. May you help this congregation which has gathered here at your feet that they may learn to labor with their hands, that they may be able to support themselves and support those who are with them and also support the poor, the needy, the sickly, the blind, and all who deserve their help. We pray, dear Father, that may you may do a wonderful miracle, touch our hearts, that you may do the most wonderful miracle of removing selfishness from our hearts and filling it with your love, compassion, and mercy. May you help us, Lord, to do this work faithfully, not only in preaching the word, but in medical missionary work, and also in laboring, in doing manual labor that may provide for our household and also for the household of faith. Help your people today to understand the import of this message that the only way this gospel can go forward is to unite, be orderly, and also to labor for the needs of the world. We thank you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.